within your, your will, O Lord. Lord. All, All things are established, and there is none that can resist your will. For you have made all things, the heaven and the earth, and all that is held within the circle of heaven. You are the Lord of all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our Amen. sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpassed the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us, to pardon what conscience dreads, to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, after 14 years, I again went up to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along also. I went up in accord with the revelation, and I presented to them the gospel that I preached to the Gentiles, but privately to those of repute, so that I might not be running or half run in vain. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter to the circumcised, for the one who worked in Peter for an apostolic to the circumcised worked also in me for the Gentiles. And when they recognized the grace bestowed upon me, James and Cephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave me and Barnabas their right hands in partnership that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Only we were to be mindful of the poor, which is the very thing I was eager to do. And when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he clearly was wrong. For until some people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he began to draw back and separate himself because he was afraid of the circumcised. And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him, with the result that even Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not on the right road in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in front of all, if you, though a Jew, are living like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial song. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out, Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go, Go out, out to the world and tell the good news. news. For steadfast is his kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go, Go out, out to all the world and tell the good news. news. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. You have received the spirit of adoption as sons through which we cry, Abba, Father. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, 
Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final test, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, we are continue, continuing our book, Will Catholics Be Left Behind? We're at chapter 7, page 207 to page 221. Now, before we begin tonight, if I may address those who watch this Mass on video, before uh, the Mass, we were discussing, as I think we all came into agreement on the same thing, this was redundant, this section tonight. And I'll give you my example. It begins on page 210 with these words. He begins a new paragraph with these words. Have, as we have seen in detail. <laughs> We've already seen it. I honestly did not gain any new insights. Uh, uh, did someone else come up with something? John, you, you might have had a thought? Well, yeah, I did. Okay, please. When they're talking about this, and I've seen how they, a few good men had a belief, even though it wasn't really right, but so, they had a heart, they had a belief in dispensationalism, you know? Okay, may I just say, you said they had a, a few good men had an idea that wasn't really right. When something isn't really right, that means it is wrong. wrong. But then again, you can see how it got corrupted within 100, 150 years, how other people grab hold and well the uh, whole you know country. again as we have seen in detail as he writes when you start with the wrong premise no matter how far you go it's still wrong well that's where i said thank god for the church mm -hmm. the church is so important yes it sir takes what is true and never doesn't change the truth. Doesn't deviate. It doesn't it, it, deviate. You know, that the one thing that you're bringing up, it's repeated, which we already know, is the fact that there is no hierarchy in these dispensationalist cults. If we each, and I'm including those on, who watch tonight on video, if each one of us was our own church leader and we each had an idea, then how could we be unified? Because we're fighting each other with our own individual idea. Now, that's the beauty of the Catholic Church because we have <clears throat> the hierarchy of the church, the bishops who help guide us, and it's not only us, but you look at a lot of mainline Protestant denominations, they too have some form of hierarchy. But what we're centering on tonight is the mom and pop storefront church that just develops uh, like a holiness church or Pentecostal church, a non-denominational church. And there's no real because some of these ministers don't even have to have education. They can feel called to become ministers and they start their own church and they name themselves the reverend, the bishop, the prophet, and their wife is the prophetess. You know, so, but again, it goes back to that 
statement, as we have seen in detail, if you start with something that's already fundamentally flawed, even if you have sincere people who are professing this, it's already fundamentally flawed, so you can't ever really recover unless you have to dismantle the whole process and start fresh. You know, I'll give you an example. He talks about the literal interpretation that they keep referring to. We have to take the Bible literally. They don't. There's no way they do. If they were to take the Bible literally, I am not five foot five. I am seven feet eight. I'm not 230. I am 270. Okay, I'm seven feet eight. I'm 270. I'm the starting center for the professional basketball team, the Boston Celtics. Okay, I'm just doing this on the side. Why would I make such an outlandish claim? Because if they took the Bible literally, what would their interpretation of be of John's sixth chapter? Jesus says, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life within you. My flesh is real food, my blood is real drink. In story. On to the next question. He gives the apostles, disciples in the upper room after his resurrection, he gives them the Holy Spirit, breathes on them. It says, Receive the Holy Spirit who sends you forgive, or forgiven them who sends you hold bound or held bound. Okay. Does that mean he's giving to those early church leaders the same power he has to forgive sins? And they would pass that same gift on, i.e. the sacrament of confession, reconciliation, penance, however you want to call it. So these mom and pop stores that come up that say we take the Bible literally because it says call no man on earth your father, therefore you can't call your minister father. They have to be brother, bishop, prophet, prophetess, whatever. Unless they are eating the flesh of the Son of Man and drinking his blood, unless they are practicing the sacrament of reconciliation, you know, there's there's a laundry list. And Jesus said, Hey, if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. How many one eye, one hand ministers do you see? <laughs> see, look, two hands. Okay? It's Jewish exaggeration. <coughs> so it, it's, I find, a fundamental flaw. It, they say they take the Bible literally. No, they don't. <coughs> then you start from that flawed statement. You don't have really any insight because they don't really talk about church history. In the development of history. Uh, look, they we all profess the word Trinity, right? Every Christian church speaks of a Trinity. God is the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But they say, sola scriptura, unless it's in the Bible alone, it's not supposed to be. Well, there's no word Trinity in the Bible. So we can't use that if you take their statement, solar scriptura, literally. Well, throw that out the door. Uh, so, again, I, I truly was disappointed because I, uh, anyone else? Well, that's why it made me so thankful for the church. Yes, the sir. The church leaders. And I think, you know, can you just put that over there? Thank you know, I don't want to say any negative about anything else, but so many of these other things are they they become a social association, you know. They just, sure. Well, and we come here to this church to to meet God. Yes. Okay. Let's look at it this way. You said you're happy because the church doesn't change, and it's not a social association what I think 
we're blessed with is the fact that the church does not change her beliefs, her teachings, based upon social situations. My example, the end of the 1800s, every Christian denomination was opposed to any form of artificial birth control. Every one of them was against artificial birth control. Now, who's the only one against artificial birth control? We are. Okay. That's a prime example. You change your beliefs vis-a-vis. Gosh, I remember the, the, the flight that has occurred recently in the Episcopal Church when they went to the ordination of female priest, then the ordination of openly homosexual priest, the ordination of an openly homosexual bishop. But they were applauded by society. But you saw a mass exodus. Ali, you're my resident scholar, am I correct? Well, and Gwen would know more than I would. But Gwen? Yeah, a lot did leave, that's true. Gwen, you're my other resident scholar. <laughs> then Mary, you cap off the triumvirate of resident scholars <laughs> in the Episcopal Church. Here we are, just ask us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. We lay up. <laughs> yeah, I understand y'all left also. Uh, okay. I'm going to switch gears since we're basically wrapped up with the book for this chapter. Monique, what are we going to do for next week? We're going to finish this chapter. We'll finish chapter 7 next week. It goes through page 240. Up to page 240. Now, I want to propose something to you. If it does not improve, if, chapter, if we finish chapter 7 and it the end of chapter 7 is as redundant as the beginning has been. Would you consider moving to another book? Okay. Yes. Good. Do you have something you would like to learn about? In exorcism. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, you found a specific book on exorcism. What is the name of the book, please? An Exorcist Explains the Demonic by Father Gabriel Amon. Okay, An Exorcist Explains the Demonic by Father Gabriel. I think his last name is Amor. Amor. Or Amor. I, I truly don't know. Okay, he was the diocesan exorcist in Rome. Yes, he's already written one, two, that I know of at least three books that I've read so far in English. He's written more in Italian, but I know of three in English that I've already read. An Exorcist tells his story. Uh, that was the first one. Then he had more stories from an exorcist, and then the memoirs of an exorcist, and then now this book. It was released yesterday. It was released yesterday. Okay. Is that something you would like to read? What's that way? What say to you? Would you like to speak? Someone speak up. I would. Angie would like to. I would like to. It, it went beyond just exorcism, but it talked about demonic spirits. Okay, also, because it talks about not just exorcism, yes. but the influence of evil upon of evil. Yes. an individual and society. Right. So it's more of a general uh, study than a specific looking at one aspect. Right. The introduction is really good. You put that on there. Okay. The rest of the title is, oh, the, An Exorcist Explains a Demonic, The Antics of Satan and His Army of Fallen Angels. Right. Is that right. pressed up? Okay. That's okay. Right. Outside of that, is there anything else you would like to 
look at. Name a subject on the church. Is there anything you're interested in? I thought Betty had come up with one too. Okay, Deacon Bullock, do you remember what your wife came up with? Yeah, I think she came up with Sunday school. 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 Sunday
and we'll look into it. Uh, I just, I feel like uh, the current author is beating a dead horse. And I, I, I've got it. I don't need to hear it again. So unless it's something that's really different, then uh, I, I would say let's go on. Okay? Are we in agreement with that? Okay, I think we all are then. Okay. Well, unless there's anything else tonight, uh, I just want to highlight one thing. Uh, Deacon Bullock reminded me of something this morning, but I don't know if you picked it up, our first reading. Pete, uh, Paul is telling the Galatians that he confronted Peter, and uh, we were discussing it this morning a little bit off of the homily from this morning, but there's two points you can learn from that first reading. Paul's point, which is, if we truly love someone, we need to have the courage to speak to them honestly, to help them so that they can be a better individual. You know, we live in a society of snowflakes. Uh, you know, my gosh, colleges where they have to have safe spaces so they don't hear anything that could damage them or psychologically harm them for however long. Uh, so, if you really want someone whom you love, and we're not talking just your immediate family, but we should have that same love and desire for everyone, that we want them to be their best, so we need to speak to them honestly and truthfully. And I say that because it's like if I was a, a terrible priest at something, I would hope that someone would speak to me and say, Father Associate, you need to improve on this because that would only help me to be a better priest. Okay? Now, the second point of this was Peter's thing. Peter had to have humility to hear what Paul said to him. Because I know sometimes if people say things to us, and I understand that someone can say it in an awkward way that can be off-putting but instead of immediately jumping to our defense how dare they say this about us i think peter gives us an example of how we should step back listen to what they said kind of mull it over because there may be some truth awkwardly expressed however but there may be truth to it that can truly help us to be the better person and it takes humility to listen to what someone says, especially if it's something that is honest that we need to address, to look at and to take that in, pray about it, and move on with it. So that's a great lesson that we can take for tonight. I didn't want to leave you with nothing, but if you have a time, go back and kind of think about that. Paul loves Peter, so he's willing to speak honestly, courageously to Peter, in love, in a charitable way. Peter loves and respects Paul, that he's willing to listen to what he says, even if what he says is basically an acknowledgement of Peter's wrongdoing. Okay? All right. Is there anything else? All right. Well, y'all have a most blessed night tonight. Almighty God bless you. Thank you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Coming together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. For all who have bound themselves to God, that with his help they may faithfully keep to their resolve. Let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord we are prayer. For peace among nations, that delivered from all turmoil, the peoples may serve God <laughs> in freedom of heart. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elderly who suffer from isolation or sickness, that they may be strengthened by our love of them as brothers and sisters, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves gathered here, that as God does not cease to sustain us with the things of this life, we may know how to use them in such a way that we may hold even now to the things that endure forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Mary Sullivan, may she rest in peace, and for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, let us conclude by praying for your needs and the needs of our extended family who watch this Mass on video. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with the glory be in prayer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise of the Lord is His name. For our good and good of all the souls. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through these sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctified work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. You were through me made all things to be sent as our Savior and Redeemer. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glories with one voice, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all of the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your works now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lay not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. 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 Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but I want to say a word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the soul that sees him.
let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God. Prayer to St. Michael. Holy, Holy Michael, Michael, the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. Be, be our protection, protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine powers, thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus, the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God, his angels, 